All right, guys, we're back at the uh, TXV job where we put the AC Renew in. I've got the new TXV. It finally came in from Tampa Bay, Florida. This has probably been about a week and a half since we did the AC Renew. That's how long it took the valve to get here. Um, but the customer's going to start it up. I want to see if it made any, if that solution ever did make any in, or additive, whatever you want to call it, ever did make an improvement. I'm changing the valve either way. I just want to see what it did. Um, it looks like the system recently cut off. You can see the pipe is kind of sweaty. It looks like it might have froze a little bit because the pressures are playing. But she's about to go crank it up so we can pop it down. And I just wanted to see if this, if the additive did anything. All right, guys. Well, you can see the uh, additive still has not done anything. And it's been in there for a, at least a week and a half. We got the sub cooling, but we don't have the suction pressure. And we do not have the superheat. We're low. This is too low. So that's why we have the valve. So I'm going to pop this thing down. And then I'm gonna go climb in the attic and we're gonna change out that valve. All right guys, so we got a gaff two ton. I hate these damn, these damn units. The TAMs are a lot better, but these things are a pain in the ass to take apart. And I'm leaving the blower running so I can have some kind of air on me. It's not that hot up here yet, but it's hot enough to where I'll take some kind of airflow moving in my face. And since it's a positive pressure coil, I don't have to take a duck off or anything. But I do have to remove this coil door and probably that door around the freaking drain to get to the expansion valve. Because this is the tiny air handler. These these gaffs and these tams and gams, whatever they are, they're when you when you when you get into the smaller tonnages, they're they're tiny and they just suck. I hate them. I don't know why train guys think these air handlers are so superior because they're not. They are nothing but a pain in the ass. Oh, it looks like that valve's been changed before. Now, I know this one was hooked to an R22 unit, but we came up here and made sure that it had a 410 valve in it. I'm pretty sure it did. Because if not, I would have ordered a valve with the condenser swap out or I would have put a piston in it or something. Phillip head screws. It's identical to the new one. So, that's it. Take the heater compartment door off and everything. We'll try to prop y'all up.
So I don't know how much I film I got on top of the air handler. I'll have to look and see when I get it into the editing software, but the hardest part of this job was getting the panels back on. Getting them off wasn't a big deal, but getting them back on, I think that took more effort than changing out the damn expansion valve. But I got the drain tied back in. I did get the doors back on. I hate these damn air handlers. Train, what the hell were y'all thinking when y'all built this piece of You know what. All right, we're gonna go outside and change the filter dryer and vacuum the system. I just wanted to show you guys the old valve is a 410A. There it is right there. It says train, but this valve looks like a Dan Foss to me. And if anybody's interested, the part number on this particular expansion valve for a two ton, I don't know if this valve goes all the way up to three tons or what, but this is a, there's a train part number, VAL11154. Probably made all the way up to three tons. All right, I got the new filter dryer in. I'm about to braze it. So I'll braze that in, start the vacuum, and uh, we'll be just about done with this. All right, so I've got the vacuum running. I use the 3 8 port with the true blue hose, pulling through the suction with no core, and then the micron gauges screwed to the liquid side with the core still in it 
and we're pulling down nice and fast. New filter dryer. So we're looking good. We'll let that pull down below 500, let it decay below 500, and then release the gas and start this thing up. That sure does look a lot better. Well, the sub that, that expansion valve is playing right now because it's like 80, 83 degrees up there since I had the system down and it wasn't cooling that well anyway. So I still got a lot to clean up. I got to clean up my nitrogen, my torch, and my vacuum uh, hoses and stuff, the case. So I'm gonna let this run while I clean up and see where it settles at. But we're, we're all ready. We got suction pressure now. We got a little bit of superheat. We got a degree of subcooling. We just got to let it equalize. Okay, guys, I, we're gonna leave it right there because again, when it's, when it's above 80 degrees in a space, an expansion valve is wide open. It's kind of working like a piston. Our superheat is beautiful. Pressures are beautiful. But I, I don't want to add any gas to bring the subcooling up because then the, the superheat's going to drop so low it's going to start flooding back. So we got to perform a maintenance on that temp star right there. So we'll recheck the charge then. But I, uh, I don't want to lower that superheat anymore and it starts flooding back. Once the space starts to cool down, that subcooling should come up. So we're going to leave it right there. That's definitely a drastic improvement over what we saw earlier on this video when I first got here and then the other, a couple videos ago.